Today we have two post-resurrection stories. One about the disciples seeing Jesus twice and Thomas seeing him for the first time. And the second, a letter from Peter about faith, suffering, and salvation. I want us to focus on faith that leads to salvation. In the New Revised Standard Version, Hebrews 11th chapter, the first verse, faith is described as the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Eugene Peterson puts it this way in the message. The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation of everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. Faith is our handle on what we can't see. And what is salvation? God's intent is to save and rescue all of us. Salvation is derived from the word salvus, meaning healthy or whole. Jesus' name comes from the Hebrew root meaning salvation, and thus Jesus, the Savior. Jesus delivered people from physical, spiritual, and demonic bondage, and even from death to conditions of wholeness and soundness. Some have understood salvation as a future reward given to those who remain faithful throughout their life. Others have interpreted salvation as a quality of the present life, wholeness of being here and now. In other words, salvation has both future and present dimensions. God can save us now, tomorrow, and in years to come. And God can save us after we die. We are in continual need of God's saving grace. We are in continuing need of God rescuing us from ourselves and from the world. God wants to make us healthy and whole and complete in mind, body, and soul. Let's look at the text from the Gospel of John. In the gospel last week, Easter Sunday, after Jesus appears to a woman, a woman, Mary Magdalene, she reports to the other disciples, I have seen the Lord. Oh, good news. I have seen the Lord. She didn't keep it to herself. She told others that she has seen the Lord. In today's lesson, the story picks up where it left off, saying later on that day, the disciples had gathered together. But fearful of the Jews had locked all the doors in the house. They were sheltered in place. They were in fear. They had no peace. They were uncertain about the future. They were afraid that the Romans would find them and, and, and that they would suffer and die a horrible and painful death like Jesus. Jesus entered the locked doors, entered through the locked doors, stood among them and said, Peace to you. Then he showed them his hands and his side. Jesus is always coming to us. Locked doors, sinful behavior, hard hearts, get cheap Jesus from entering our lives. Sometimes we just don't see Jesus. We just don't see or notice Jesus' presence among us. Have mercy. The disciples, the disciples seeing the master with their own eyes were exuberant. As they were filled with joy and excitement, Jesus wanting them to know it wasn't a dream, repeated his meaning, peace to you. Just as the Father sent me, I send you. Jesus is saying, look, you can't just sit here in this upper room in fear. Just as our Father sent me to do my work, 
to do your work. Go in peace. Before his death, Jesus had said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. So again, he is saying, do not let your hearts be troubled. Don't live in fear. I give you my peace. What a great gift. What a great gift. So Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit, giving them power to forgive sins and to help heal and restore people to wholeness. Jesus leaves. The disciples' hope and faith are renewed. They are excited and talking loudly about what has just taken place when Thomas enters the room. They tell him, we saw the master. We saw the master. Thomas doubting says something like, yeah, right. I'm not taking your word. I'm from Missouri. You gotta show me. Thomas wants to see Jesus for himself. He had a particular and definite way. He wanted to see Jesus. He wanted to see nail marks in Jesus' hand. To put his finger in the wound and his hand into Jesus' side. Unless he could do this, he wouldn't believe. Sisters and brothers, how do you want to see Jesus? What will it take for you to believe Jesus is here with you? A week later, a week later, eight days later, the excitement of Easter having worn off, the excitement of the disciples seeing Jesus having worn off, we find the disciples in the upper room again, locked behind. This time, Thomas is present. Jesus enters the room through the locked door and locked heart. Jesus speaks in peace to you. Words they had heard before of confirmation that it is really Jesus. Jesus turns to Thomas. Knowing what it would take for Thomas to believe, he invites Thomas to take your finger and examine my hands. Take your hand and stick it in my side. Don't be unbelieving. Believe. Believe. Have faith. And Thomas believes, saying, my master and my God. My master and my God. Jesus asked Thomas and us a question. Do you believe? Because you see me? Do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see me and believe. Jesus does what he did before his death. He does miracles and signs in the presence of the disciples. Some of us are locked in our homes in fear. Asking, where is God? Where is Jesus? The Father and Son are here. Signs are all around us in compassionate acts of caring, in the selflessness of doctors, nurses, first responders, grocery workers, people volunteering at food banks, and so much more. The Father and Son are here as we hear people, we hear of people receiving the supplies that they need as we hear of people recovering from COVID-19. Thanks. The Father and Son are here as we hear stories of people sharing how surprised they are to receive a phone call from a friend, a church member, or a co-worker. When we show up, like Jesus shows up. People experience the love and the presence 
of Jesus through us. Be still. Be still for a moment. Take your hand and place it over your heart. Do you feel your heart beating? Do you feel your heart beating? Do you believe that it's your heart? How do you know? Since you can't see it. That's faith. That's faith. While we continue to sit in our upper rooms behind locked doors, sheltered in place, may we reflect and recall the signs and miracles we have witnessed in our lifetime that remind us that God has been and is with us. Healings from surgeries, near miss auto accidents, unexpected gifts or words of encouragement, answered prayers, new jobs, new homes, new friends, our basic needs met. Oh, think on these things and so much more. Write them down. Pray over the list and give thanks to God. Remembering, remembering will encourage and strengthen our hearts for the work to be done once this pandemic ends. Work to restore God's creation to the way it was meant to be. Work to bring about God's justice and righteousness. Work to bring about God's kingdom of heaven here on earth. I have heard several people say about COVID-19 pandemic that it's God's will, that God is punishing us. I don't know. I don't know. But I do know that God is in the midst of our suffering and that God ourselves for our behavior. I do know that God can and is using this pandemic to help us think about our greed and materialism and destruction of God's creation. I think God is giving us an opportunity to think about our health care system and, and not just nationally but globally. I believe that God is helping us to see more clearly I believe that God is reminding us that the earth is a small place and that we're all in it together even as we have man-made borders. I believe God is using this pandemic to help us to reflect on what it means to be a community and to love God and to love our neighbor. God cares about all of us, every one of us. Yes, he does. Jesus cares for our mind, our body, and our soul. This week's reading from 1 Peter touches on the suffering that has come to these new Christians on account of their new way of life and the joy that comes from trusting in God who raised Jesus from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus is about new life. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 begins with a praise. Praise be to God! What a God we have! And how fortunate we are to have him, this father of our master, Jesus. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we have been given a brand new life and have everything to live for, including a Starts now. The future starts now. God is keeping careful watch over us in the future. The day is coming when you have it all. Life in you and whole. Oh my. Oh my. That's cause for rejoicing. 
in Jesus, we have a living hope. Amen? Amen. We have this living hope because it is based in Jesus' resurrection from the dead, his triumph over death. We have this living hope because death cannot overcome it. We have this living hope because even in the face of tribulation, it does not back down or grow faint. This living hope is hope that gives in this living hope, we have been given an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. You know how families fight over the inheritance at the death of a loved one? You know how the inheritance runs out because it gets run through, misused, and mismanaged? The inheritance we have from God is an inheritance that never perishes, spoils, or fades. It is an inheritance that can't be destroyed, can't be tarnished, or marred. It is kept for us in heaven. We are being protected by the power where we are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. God says, it is signed, sealed, and will be delivered. It's yours. I'm yours. In this, you can rejoice. It doesn't mean we won't face some suffering or, or have some trials in our life. Verse 6 reminds us, now for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials. The church has always had to face some suffering. Just as gold is tested by fire, we too will be tested. This passage is not describing suffering in general. Instead, the writer addresses a particular situation, the suffering of persecuted Christian community. When the church stands up to speak out against injustices and oppression, when the church speaks truth to power in love, it will be persecuted. It will be told by the powers, stay in your place. There is a separation between church and state. But the truth is, decisions made, whether at a federal level, at the state house, or at the local level, should be made with compassion and justice and, and, and with the least of these in mind. Politics is about the people and we in the faith community are the people. We are God's people. We are called to lift our voices in the name of Jesus, in the name of love, in the name of justice for all. Therefore, as we take a stand for the least, the lost, the lonely, and the left out, the genuineness of our faith will be tested. The suffering of the Christian community connects to the community of the cross, connects the community to the cross. The suffering of the Christian community connects us to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Peter knows something about suffering and being tested. Have you ever suffered for your Christian faith? Lost a job, friends, family? How has it made your faith stronger? If you haven't suffered for your faith, can you imagine what you have to do to keep your faith as you find yourself at the receiving end of persecution or other suffering? Living, living the faith won't always be easy. We will have moments of doubt like Thomas. Yet may we always remember our genuine faith will be more precious than gold. Our genuine faith will be more precious than gold for even gold can be consumed. 
May all we do result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus is revealed in the last days. Like a loved one gone off to military service that we don't see. Like a child gone away to college that we don't see. We don't stop loving them. So even though we might all, not always see Jesus, don't stop loving him or serving him. Continue to believe in him. The text closes with a reminder to rejoice with indescribable and glorious joy, yeah. with laughter and singing. Because you kept on believing, you will get what you're looking forward to. You are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your soul, total salvation. May God's saving grace be upon you now and forever. Let us pray. Living Christ, today we seek to love you whom we cannot see and to trust in your promises that you are with us whatever comes it's in your name it's in your name that we pray may we hold on and keep the faith that leads to salvation amen, amen. sisters and brothers as we prepare to sing our closing song i just want to remind you that this week, April 22nd, is Earth Day. It's Earth Day. So may we be thinking about what we can do in our own homes, in our neighborhood and communities to take care of God's creation. Maybe it's picking up the, the trash in front of our house or our neighbor's houses on either side. Maybe it's thinking again about recycling. But may we focus on how we take better care of God's creation. And then I want to invite you to extend care to our Native American brothers and sisters. As next Sunday is Native American Ministry Sunday, a church-wide special Sunday of the United Methodist Church that helps to provide scholarships for our Native American seminarians and to strengthen and develop Native American ministries and communities both in the urban and rural context. And so I invite you to write a check, mail it, stick it in the church mailbox and on the run line, write Native American Ministry Sunday. May we Prepare to sing our closing song. Yes, God is real. Yes, God is real. May we tell someone that God is real and how we've experienced the resurrection of Jesus Christ as we practice resurrection in this coming week.
disciples and he comes to us this day. He says, peace be with you. Yeah. He says, don't be afraid. But just as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And he doesn't send us without power. He doesn't send us without grace. He doesn't send us out without love. Jesus goes with us. And so may we go into the world this week, telling all that Christ the Lord is risen. He's risen indeed. He lives. He lives. And because he lives, we too can live with, with courage and hope. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord use you in my name. Go. Knowing that Christ goes with you.